Please stand by for further details. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. What's up guys, it's BD here, and today I wanna to pose this question to you all. Why on earth did Logitech stop making the G303 Dallas Apex? It's a lightweight mouse, it has a 3366 sensor and a great claw grip shape in my opinion. So what gives? I believe it was discontinued around the same time that the G Pro came out as a replacement for it because so many people were complaining about the shape cramping their hands. And I can see why because it's not a one size fits all mouse. It has these very defined edges and I can see how that can hurt your hand especially if you're trying to palm grip it or even fingertip grip it sometimes. I believe that Logitech wanted to make something more universal and more comfortable for everyone but I kind of beg to differ because for most people, they want control, we want control, right guys, over their mouse, and the G303 offers that, and then some, in my opinion. So today I'm gonna be going over why I think Logitech needs to bring back the G303 and some improvements that they can make moving forward from that old 2015 model. Now the price of this mouse can vary because it can only be bought used right now. When it came out, it was only $70. But now you can find them for that price, if not higher. And I think that price is really driven by Shroud, one of the best FPS players to ever walk this earth. So naturally, everybody's gonna want this mouse. So today, let's figure out if it is worth it. So let's start off with the build quality and the design of this mouse. It's coming in at 87 grams. I'd like to see Logitech maybe shave off a couple of more grams, maybe 80, 75, 70 would be perfect for this mouse in my opinion. It's got six mouse buttons, two on the side, a scroll wheel, a DPI button on the top, which is slanted back. So if you reach your index finger back, it'll catch on that little slant there, which is very nice. The side buttons are near the edge of the mouse at the top of the slant, and it kind of feels awkward sometimes to press them, but it's not horrible. It's got that old Logitech scroll wheel that's smooth. I think if they were to remake this mouse, uh, I think I would like to see like a ridge scroll wheel like on their newer mice like a G Pro or a G305. Let's drop an early sound test for you guys because I know you love them so much. We got the mouse one and two. We got the side buttons. We got the DPI button. We got the scroll wheel button. I'll do some scrolling for you as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> like I said earlier, this mouse has a diamond shape with six sides that you don't really see too often. And for a lot of people, this brought a lot of discomfort in the past. On the front two side panels, they have a nice matte coating with a nice slant towards the bottom footprint where your thumb, pinky, and ring fingers go. On the back, it's got a glossy shine through RGB cage that looks pretty sick in my opinion. It's got those hexagons back there. I don't know if uh, they were on the hexagon height before Final Mouse, but they're definitely on there. I love this caged RGB look. It's very distinct and it makes this mouse stand out. You know that this is gonna be a G303 when you see it. It's also got the RGB Logitech G logo on the back and then at the very butt of the mouse, the part that sits into your palm, it's got a slight roundedness to it to give slight comfort. So let me get this out of the way right now, guys. This mouse is 100% made for claw grip. While you can use other grip styles, I don't feel like they'll be optimal. It's almost impossible to get a palm grip on this mouse. The back isn't big enough to hold the whole size of your palm. That diamond shape is very tapered, so it's very hard to get your whole palm on there as well. For fingertip grip, I feel like it's more doable than palm grip, but I feel like the corners of the diamond really get in the way. And those are the reasons why I think this mouse is the best for claw grip or hybrid claw grip users. The good thing about claw grip is that unless you have freakishly large hands, your fingers can bend a little bit to accommodate for the clicks. The diamond shaped sides of the G303 make controlling this mouse with your thumb and pinky amazing as demonstrated here. Now, if you found the G Pro or the G305 or any of its variants too slippery or too smooth, I think that the edges on the G303 might be what you guys are looking for. Now, whenever I mention Logitech's braided cords, people get their panties in a bunch and they always ask me why it is that I hate braided cords. Well, you can't convince me that they're good. Let me show you guys what I mean. Look at this, it's fraying over time. This stuff is gonna break down over time. It's stiff when you press against it. You are definitely 
going to want a mouse bungee when you have any of the Logitech braided cords. The six mouse feet are actually really, really smooth. Logitech might have to go back to these stock feet because they actually feel great on cloth and hybrid pads. It's rocking a Dedalus Apex 3366 sensor. I hope I'm saying that right. This features a Delta Zero optical sensor, which minimizes speed related accuracy variance. Now, I don't know if this is just marketing mumbo jumbo or what, but the sensor has been performing perfectly for me. It's super accurate. I have a feeling that the Daedalus Apex was just like a precursor to their newer Hero sensor, which is one of my favorites currently. The DPI goes up to 12,000 DPI. I experienced no spin outs with this mouse as well. Super solid all the way around. Now the Logitech G Hub software is my favorite. You guys know that. Uh, it has a lot of bugs. It won't show your mouse sometimes. You have to restart it just for your mouse to show up. So there's a lot of things that go wrong with it. But overall, I feel like they are kind of fixing some of the bugs because I haven't had any of those problems lately. So I have hope for them. Thank you Logitech for the updates. But anyways guys, in the software, you can actually control the RGB, the DPI, and if you wanna customize the buttons, you can do that as well. Everything that you need is gonna be there like always. Overall, the performance of this mouse has blown me away and left me questioning why this mouse was taken away from us so soon. Gone too soon, right? It was only introduced in 2015 and after using it for the past month, I feel like this mouse is just quick. It's built for speed with the edges allowing extreme control for claw grip users out there. I repeat, claw grip users. For most people, I think that they won't find it comfortable and me personally, my hands did get a little bit crampy after a while, but after a few days of gaming with this mouse, my hand got used to it because I came from the GUO skull and that's the ergo mouse. So when you go from like an ergo mouse to a straight claw grip mouse, there's gonna be some discomfort. And uh, this mouse, it's built for speed, it's built for performance. Um, so comfort kind of takes a back seat in a way. Um, and that just comes with the territory. But if anything, they should make this wireless and or just remove that braided cord and put one on it like the G Pro Hero and put a newer scroll wheel on it. And I think a lot of people would come running back to this mouse if they ever did re-release it. So Logitech, from us mice enthusiasts to you, please re-release this mouse because we need it, all right? So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. It has been your boy BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.